I give you greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For our scripture today, let's look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Today I want to look at a few things from this short verse. This verse is often used when sharing the gospel with individuals. Forty-five years ago, I was a counselor at a Christian youth camp called Circle C Ranch. This was one of the verses that we would turn to while sharing the gospel with someone who wanted to receive Jesus as their Savior. Now, in the context of Revelation chapter 3, these words are directed at the church at Laodicea. This church appeared to be spiritually on track in their action, in their worship, and in their words. But in reality, they were prideful, and Jesus did not have any good position within the church. In fact, he is positioned on the outside of the church, and he is seeking entrance. This is a sad picture which could be drawn to describe many local churches today. And so we need to pray that God would help us to always keep the door open and humbly seek his presence every day. But there's something else that we see here in this verse. It gives us an opportunity to see many aspects of our Savior, and I want to look at a few of them today. First of all, Jesus is a present Savior. Let's look at these three words, at the door. You see, he is not off in the distance. He is present the psalmist says this, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Our Savior is present in every situation. What a great comfort that is, especially when we are confronted with such things as discouragement and loneliness and even fear. He is right there at the door. Jesus is a present Savior. Secondly, Jesus is a waiting Savior. Look at those first three words. Behold, I stand. Think about how patient and long-suffering our Savior really is. He is willing to wait for us to respond to him. He's standing there. He is just tuning in to our voice, waiting for us to open the door. Think about the parable of the prodigal son. After this young man had thrown his inheritance away, in great humility he made his way back home. The father is waiting, waiting to warmly and joyfully receive his son that was lost. Oh, how God loves us. No matter what we have done or where we have gone, we see God waiting for us to make the move toward him. Jesus is a waiting Savior. Thirdly, Jesus is a seeking Savior. Look at those two words. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He is actively attempting to get our attention. There he is, on the outside, knocking. Remember the narrative in Luke's gospel describing the journey of Jesus through Jericho? A tax collector named Zacchaeus had climbed up into a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus when he passed by. Zacchaeus was not accepted socially. He was not popular. And yet Jesus stopped at the bottom of that tree. 
He looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, climb down out of that tree. I'm going to your house today. Jesus was knocking on his door while he was still in the tree. Jesus actively seeks us out. He is not just some friend who simply tolerates us because we're there. He wants to be with us. He wants to interact with us. He wants the opportunity to bring transformation and renewal into our lives. Jesus is a seeking Savior. Jesus is also, fourthly, a pleading Savior. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, his knock is followed by his call. How often the Lord speaks to us through his word, through the Holy Spirit, and even through circumstances. Throughout the gospel, we find Jesus pleading with people to repent to believe, to listen, to love, and to pray. During these days of, of hardship, during this crisis that we're going through right now, we need to open our ears to the voice of the Savior. He says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is a pleading Savior. Fifthly, Jesus is a promising Savior. He says, I will come in. We have a Savior that promises to help us in our time of need. I encourage you to read your Bible. Pay attention to Scripture verses. Ask the Spirit of God to use God's Word to speak to you. You know, so often when we are in God's Word, we're drawn to claim promises that remind us of the Lord's power, the Lord's presence, and the Lord's wisdom. Grab a hold of these promises. Listen to these. I will hold your right hand with my righteous right hand. I will not leave you or forsake you. I will forgive you. I will come again. Promises that come from a Savior who keeps his word. Jesus is a promising Savior. And lastly, Jesus is a providing Savior. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. Jesus is providing what we need for the fellowship. Jesus brings it with him. He is the author and the finisher of faith. He is the beginning and the end. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God will provide us with what we need when we need it. He said to David that he was even in the presence of his enemies, preparing a table, a feast for him. In fact, then David declared, my cup runs over. He finishes that psalm with these words, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a great provider we have in Jesus. Yes, Jesus is a providing Savior. So let's review. Jesus is a present Savior. He's a waiting Savior, a seeking Savior, a pleading Savior, a promising Savior, and a providing Savior. 
He is a wonderful Savior. And I would encourage you to make sure that he is not on the outside knocking at your door. Make sure that he is right there with you. Have fellowship with Jesus. Interact with Jesus. Follow Jesus. He is a wonderful Savior. If you do not know Jesus as your Savior, I would encourage you to remember God loves you. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary to pay the penalty for your sin. They put him in a borrowed tomb. Three days later, he rose from the dead. He is the resurrection and the life. He wants to be your Savior today. You can right now, right where you are, confess your sin, repent of your sin, and by faith, receive Jesus Christ into your life. We'd love to hear from you. Please let us know if you need a Bible, if you need help spiritually. Let us pray. Lord, I pray for those who make decisions to receive you as Savior, but I also pray, Lord, for believers who right now are struggling. I pray for believers who don't even realize that they are out of fellowship with you. Lord, help all of us to maintain an intimate, close relationship with you, knowing that you are a wonderful Savior. Lord, help us as we continue to go through these days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.